All right, welcome back everybody. Today is gonna to be one of those videos I told you about. It's kind of an all over the place video. And if you stumbled across this looking for a how to hook up an RV plug video, this probably isn't it. Although I'm not saying you can't learn something. Welcome to the channel if you're new. I kind of do lots of little projects around our place. Gardening, tractor work, electrical work, woodwork, things like that. It's just kind of a day and a glimpse into our little homesteading life. So behind me, I've got a temporary power pole here. This is what we put in years ago when we first got the property. And uh, it's where we hooked our camper up originally when we started developing the place. I still have it even though I have 200 amp service to the building now. And I'm gonna use it as temporary for a little while longer then pull it up. It used to run over to the shop that's not there anymore. And uh, I'm gonna kill all that power that goes over there. So I'm gonna get this pole up here before long and wire up our new shop, which I'll tell you about here shortly off the 200 amp service out of the building here. And eventually when we build a house, we'll just run another 200 amp service over to that. So today, I'm gonna start this video off by hooking up a 50 amp RV plug here. This is a 100 amp service. The only other thing that I will have currently running on it is a 30 amp pump and well, so I'll still be under the rating for it. The reason I'm doing 50 amp instead of the 30 that I have running to the other camper, since it's about to go, is because uh, if you've watched the, the channel, you know that camper got totaled due to a tornado that tore everything down. Luckily, my wife's brother has been very generous and uh, he's gonna let us use his fifth wheel RV for a while, which is a much higher amperage service. That's why I've gotta put the 50 in until we can find something uh, locally that's suitable for us. Just kinda having a hard time finding any uh, camper right now that's not extremely expensive or just junk. So maybe we'll stumble across something eventually. So that's where we're gonna start the video do a little bit of work in the garden, talk about some upcoming things. I just finalized something a few minutes ago on the phone for the new building. So a lot of exciting things happening. Appreciate y'all watching. All right, I went out and bought some of this uh, six gauge wire and you've got to use three conductor, I found out, because you're not running 240 to the camper, you're running two 110s. So it's got to have a neutral. Think of it as just running 110 in a house. So it took a little bit of getting used to, even though I'm hooking it up to a 240 breaker, you're just essentially running two 110 legs out with a neutral that's common between them. I'm gonna hook it up with some of this old flex loom here bought some of these old compression fittings so this should be relatively watertight then I'm just gonna move this box over to the new building and run wire a different way we'll talk about that in a little bit Luckily, this is labeled pretty well. White, which is your neutral. You have an X and Y, which is your two hots, your red and black. They can go either side, doesn't matter. Again, this is 110 volts, 110 volts, sharing a common neutral. Then you have your ground, which screws to the back of this box. I just took it out for convenience. And you can see I've already done run one ground wire into there, and I'll connect it to my breaker panel that has a ground wire it's run to two rods in the ground.
right, so there's my finished product. The ground hooked to the box. The incoming ground, grounding the box out. Like I said, it doesn't matter which side. Your red and your black are hot, either side. Then your white neutral, just hook it up to where it says white. So when you look to the outside of the plug, the round one's always ground. You have a 110 hot on either side, and then a neutral. Kill power to everything. Get y'all to look at this. Let me know if this is just a Florida thing or if y'all have this where y'all live. If y'all can see in there, it's so dark. Just tons and tons of dead ants. Our ants here, for some reason, love getting in electrical components, especially the points on a pumping well. There's a lot of times we'll be, uh, especially in the summertime, trying to take a shower. All of a sudden, we don't have any water. You go out there, and there's just wads of ants in the points on the well, and it'll no longer make contact. It's just crazy. I mean, look. I don't know if it's the electrical current that gives off, if there's some heat in there, or exactly what it is. All right, so there it is. I don't even know if you could see with this thing being so shaded. But I got my red and black hooked up to my 50 amp breaker. Got my neutral hooked up to the incoming white taped neutral lug. And I got my ground also hooked up to that bar right there. Now I'm gonna be killing this 30 amp breaker because if I didn't, technically I would be, let's see here, 10 amps over what this box would have. So I'm gonna kill the 30. I'll be cutting that wire off underground once we hook up this other camper. And then I'll just be running this 50 and this 30 out of this 100 amp box. All right, well, I'm wired up, ready to go with 50 amp service whenever the uh, fifth wheel gets here this weekend. And like I said, this is strictly temporary. That's why I didn't make it look any nicer than it is. And you're probably wondering, why don't I just use the plug I already got over there or use that wiring and just wire it up differently? And that's because I don't have near the right size gauge wire ran over there again run 30 amp service in that little pull behind. These new fifth wheels with dual ACs and just everything else they got going on in them, they need a lot more amperage. That's why they get two runs of this 50 amp here. So it's a tremendous amount more wattage and amperage that you can carry. So that's why I had to beef it all the way up to that six gauge wire. And that brings me to the next point. I'm sure there's a lot of you that watch the channel that have 50 amp RVs. This is new to me. I've got to make about a 60 to 70 foot run from my building to where my new building is gonna be to where we're gonna temporarily park this RV. What size wire do you recommend? Reading online, some people say you can get away with six gauge, but that's kind of a long run. Think about beefing that up to four gauge. So if you've run any length of wire, say a little over 50 feet for a 50 amp service, what size do you recommend? All right, so like I said, this is all done. So let's talk for a minute. Got some stuff to share for the channel. Then I'm gonna show you a couple more things. We'll get into gardening. So as you come down the building, the shop here, you know, that's where the pole barn used to be, unless you're real new to the channel. And, and I'll just quickly hit on the point that we just got hit by a tornado, lost our four-year-old pole barn. It totaled the camper. Insurance company's coming to get that. So that's why I'm doing what I'm doing here. But I've been talking about putting up a new pole barn and had a lot of different ideas. We've been toying with some crazy stuff. So this pole right here is out here for a reason because I've been out here just trying to visualize. I have decided that I'm gonna put a much larger pole barn this direction. So it's gonna kind of run just like this building here, just long ways this direction. And the reason we're gonna do that is I'm doing away with everything that you see here, the wiring, the plumbing, everything. So all this stuff will go under the new pole barn I'm gonna smooth all this out so we got some tractor work coming up. I'm gonna plant this in the same grass that the yard is in. 
and there is a reason why I'm going to do that because in the future the house is going to go on the other side of that pump and well that's where we've always envisioned it so when we're on the back porch we can look out over that pasture back there and watch our horses cows goats whatever we have in that well the barn here the pole barn was always kind of an eyesore I'm going to clear out that tree here before long chip all that up that's what I'm gonna layer the garden with at least start so we're gonna have a nice view there but now the more I get to looking about it or thinking about it we were given an opportunity with this blowing down to kind of rearrange things so all this is gonna go away that's gonna be grass and you'll have this nice beautiful view from the house over here just looking out across the pasture and uh, some of this eyesore tractor equipment will kind of be tucked out of the way now over here underneath the new pole barn so if you can envision with me here for a second, the new corner of the pole barn is gonna be right here. And I'm going much larger. You know, they always say build bigger than you think you need. I thought that last 1800 square foot pole barn was huge. Biggest thing I've ever owned. It doesn't take long to get stuff up underneath it. You know how that goes. So I'm gonna do the buy once, cry once right here. I'm trying to get this over engineered. Actually, I just closed on it this morning and uh, it's about to start being built and i'll explain all that in just a little bit but let's envision here for a second this is the front corner of the pole barn it's going to run 42 feet that way 80 feet that long so almost twice the size of the last one not quite but very close to it and the reason i'm going so large is because the last 20 feet is going to be out in the pasture and i'm actually going to have a fence that's going to tie into the barn that 20 by 42, I'm going to put a horse stall in there for Tiffany. She's always wanted horses. And I'll build a little tack room in there too. And uh, I'm going to kind of design the stall to where I can put a middle divider in it. So either going to be one gigantic horse stall or we can have multiple stalls down the road. And that tack room, I'll probably put my garden equipment, shovels, rakes, things out in there because it'll be pretty large size too. We might stick some feed in it, you name it. So uh, I'll explain more of this design later. But we figured we'd go ahead and kill two birds and one stone. We already knew we was going to build a little horse stable out here in the future. So why not go ahead and put it all under one roof now. It cuts the cost down. It's built once. I'll come back later, pour the slab, and then I'll build the stall, the tack room, things like that. So that would be something pretty neat for the future of the channel. So if you can see right here, the reason I'm putting the building so far away from this building is because I still have envisioned building a skinning rack here this is where i go clean my fish on the outside so i can put scales on the ground and uh, i'm thinking about tying a skinning rack across from this building to this building that will be running right here and i want to leave enough of a gap that grass stays there so whenever i'm spraying you know blood or whatever it is down i want it to go into a nice grassy area everything underneath the building i'll uh, i'll kill that grass and eventually i may rock all that in just financially this is a big hit right now so can't do everything that I'm dreaming of. So that's the plan, 42 foot this way with a gap here so I can still kind of use my fish cleaning station and, and clean animals here. And the other reason I want a gap here is so I can easily, so I can easily pull out of the front of the building here, drive back there, grab tractor equipment on the back side, and not have to drive all the way around this shop that you're seeing here. So it just gives me quick access to the back side. So what you're looking at over here, that hump, I wish this was more level ground, but it's just the hand I've been dealt. That hump right there is uh, kind of about where the fence is gonna be. And the barn is still gonna run on the other side of that pasture fence. And again, that's where I'm gonna put a slab and uh, or some sort of foundation for the horse stalls. Gotta do a lot more research into that, the tack room, etc. So I'll wind up with a 42 by 60 here for all the tractor equipment. And there'll be a 20, by 42 over there, what's left of it for, you know, one or two horse stalls in a small tack room. Well, I tell y'all what, I feel like I've blabbed on a bit too long. And if you're new to the channel, I promise, I don't tend to talk this much, at least I don't think. So uh, we'll have a lot more projects coming up. I'm probably gonna go ahead and start another video today because I told you I, there's some pretty exciting stuff I wanna show you in the garden, especially if you watched the last video. Uh, just got a few little things I want to do, but something I really want to show you. So we'll cut back into that with a pretty quick ex episode coming up. Thank y'all so much for subscribing and watching. Again, we just hit a thousand subscribers. Pretty awesome. It's keeping me motivated, 
keeping me excited to do uh, a lot of new things, a lot of new editing. So uh, thank y'all so much for that. I can't believe that you find this little life interesting, but uh, I'm glad you do. Thanks so much for watching.